All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> How's everybody doing? It is, oh, it's the day before Halloween. It's October 30th, 2024. <laughs> it, starts, it sounds like uh, I'm about to tell a, a ghost story. It was October 30th, 2024. No, it's your boy, Doc. Um, running on low energy. I'm recording this for a couple people. So we're going to go through a couple things. One, I want to talk about NVIDIA. And I also want to talk about Spy. And I want to show off the SPX trade engine suite. Hopefully, we'll get to all three of those things. Um, where should we start? Spy is a good place to start, right? So, Spy today was a bit interesting. Uh, along with a couple other stocks. NVIDIA as well and a couple of tech ones. We opened up. We found... A bottom it wasn't really too much of a technical bottom and then it bounced right back up a lot of orders came through right as the open of, of today why that is I don't know you could speculate Microsoft you could speculate tech week whatever you want but the idea is did we have some sort of a map or a guide that could kind of help us through this I mean if, it, if you're a scalper it was a dream today right but do we have any tools that could help us through this? We could start with the GEX. Always a good place to start. The GEX. Gamma exposure. <clears throat> and we're going to get to the, the 30th. This is the feed for the SPY on the uh, zero DTE. This is under the gamma exposure channels here. What you can do is every 15 minutes there's a new snapshot so what you can do is you can cycle back in time and back test which is um one request i had from someone i'm gonna get to that but october 3rd and october 5th i think we're gonna get to that later i'll do that as a separate video so what we have here what we have here is pre-market data 9 15. you can look at this and you can try to plan your day but i always like to wait to the the after bell data usually the 945 data and at 945 that was really like past the action right 10 o'clock we were already dipped down and back up so to get in between those little 15 minute shots you can go to advanced gex you type in spy right here and you can get up to date the freshest gex data you could possibly get <laughs> here on quant trading app i should say you can go right here to spy. We'll uncheck all, and we'll just use this as a zero DTE. We can't do it. We can't look back in time now on this because this is super fresh data. But this is how you could use it to help plan your day. So this is fresh data. This is right now. The 580 is the the big number. We're right now. We're at 578. But I think we closed at 580, right? Yeah. So let's backtrack. In the morning, what did we see at the 945 data? We had 575 kind of stood out. 580, which is where we dipped down and then back up, right? That 580, well, 579.70, back up. Once we reached there, we came flying back up. But as the day progresses, this is why I always encourage people, you know, look at the feed. Look at the feed. It will change throughout the day. So one question that came up throughout the day was all of this positive gex. So there was a lot of bullish sentiment because of the positive gex it might have been other reasons too that people had in their minds but when you see this can you know just like a gang of gex right here your mind wants to say oh, okay we're just going to go here either one of these could be a target but you really have to take into account these other pieces of data right here this being call volume i've started using this more and more in my trading for support and resistance especially when it starts getting to be a spike and a drop off in the call volumes here and you can notice that even with all this high gex bars this call volume once it was reached that that apex it didn't really want to continue further on and you can also include that it was a technical a technical resistance sure but this is confluence you have the technical resistance you have a GEX, um, well, not necessarily the GEX. You have the call volume telling us resistance at the 583 mark. 
when you start seeing that reversal there, it was the overnight highs, right? It was previous overnight highs. Once you start seeing that reversal, you start looking at the other end of the GEX. Okay, so if we're not going to go higher, where are we going? If not this, then what? And all you need to do is look lower, meaning lower in the strikes. 582 is an absolute GEX spike. 581 is your max pain. 580 is your highest negative GEX. And it's also a put spike. So you can make the case of bookends between the call and put volumes. You see what I'm saying? So from 583 as a resistance and 580 as a support. And how does that look like on the chart? You can kind of get some confluence here. This is closer to 579, but you can make the case that 580, we already touched it in the morning. That could be the trajectory, right? Along the way, there's going to be levels. Here, we just have the VWAP. But this is when we start overlaying other data, the other data being the quant chart. And here is today's quant chart for SPY. And here, we actually see clear as day levels, right? We dip down to the midpoint confluent with the intraday level. Now, the intraday levels, it's not that these levels are impassable or these are going to be guaranteed reversal points. You play them level by level, just like you would a technical level. You see a level of resistance. You don't say, oh, we're going to bounce off this and come right back down. You play the level. You, you play up to it. And if you break, get a retest for higher, then you, you play the higher. If you get a rejection, you play the rejection. Same thing with the quant charts. You play the rejection off this, or in this case, a bounce. And you play to the next level. You broke through the max pain, the view app, and the two-day view app. You got to get a retest in there somewhere, right? So before we get to the next level, we come back, we retest it. And this time, instead of getting back to the two-day view app or the max pain, we stop at the first level, the, the view app. To me, that's a bullish touch. If we had come back down and reached all the way to the max pain, well, I'm saying, well, why would we just crash through these levels? You know, why did the max pain hold? That would open up other questions. That's what I'm saying. But the fact that we chose the highest level, to me, would think, okay, we're making a new high off of this bounce. It's easily bounced, in other words. So that way we get almost up to the other intraday before that reversal happens. And there's no technical level really here. We use the overnight low, I mean, the overnight highs, that's why. The overnight highs gave us the technical level. We don't see that here because this is just during the day. This is a five minute. You can also use the 15 minute if you prefer. <clears throat> so then on the way down, you play the levels again. We break through the view app and the two day view app. We come back, we retest it, and then on our way down to the next level. So we shouldn't be shocked that we closed at 580 after being rejected at a technical level and the quant level and the GEX level. Almost a quant level. You can make the case that 583.66 and 583.32 is close enough to be considered a rejection, right? That triple confluence on all three sets of data, the technical, the quant, and the GEX. And then you can just use your candlesticks. Use, your, your, uh, use the force of the candlesticks. Oh, this is a reversal. Doji. What's the doji alert sound like? We don't have to get into that. Not so much on the five minute, 15 minute. Shows it clearly. A doji reversal at a triple confluent level. This would be the play for the day. You could come into the day at 10 o'clock and be like, ah, I missed it. I missed that was the move of the day. Not so much. Not so, uh, not so fast, you know. Watch the action throughout the day. If you're an intraday trader, you know that the first move of the day is usually the strongest and the best. But the afternoon move can also be uh, profitable. Sorry, I still don't have my vocabulary back. I'm still recovering from uh, the accident. I'm going to physical therapy and, and everything. I'm doing everything correctly. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to my doctor. But anyway, play level by level and use all your your experiences and all your data points if you like certain indicators don't just stick to those indicators use those indicators along with 
other data points, other GEX levels, other GEX levels, the quant, technical, all those together gave us an idea that we were going to be traveling back to 580. Similarly, what happened, and I use this NVIDIA a lot because it's highly traded and I like it. So we use this example also. How did this happen with NVIDIA? Let's pull up the NVIDIA GEX. NVIDIA in the morning had similar high GEX in the positive zone. 932 is the first live data that comes in. Spot price was at what, 139, just below 140. We have an absolute, which is a magnet, at 142. The highest GEX is at 147. 147 is high, you know, these little gaps could make that a little bit difficult to get to. I remember checking the advanced GEX throughout the day, and there was no real high absolute GEX on this level. So this led me to believe that this is just uh, at high GEX. The, the call open interest, too, was way up here. So that all open interest, everyone's eyes were looking hard. It's Tech Week, it's NVIDIA, it's got to go up, right? That's what everyone's thinking. But I was noticing this level down here. I was taking a notice of 135, high GEX in the negative zone, and this high put spike. As the day goes on, we see this call spike develop. This call spike was at 140. It might not look much It's because it feels like it's in the background. It's not the data we're here for. We're here for the GEX. We're not here for the call and put volume, Doc. You know, we're here for the GEX level. Sure. Everything on this chart is important. And if you look at NVIDIA for the day, there was a lot of comments. They're like, what is that 140? <laughs> what was that 140 that kept beating it down? We, we had that flush down. Talk about missing an opportunity. I have 137 puts. And I said to myself, I was like, oh, yeah, I got to wake up early and make sure I get rid of those 137 puts. Probably going to go down first thing in the morning. I'm not sleeping correctly. Blah, blah, blah. Skip ahead. I missed it. So I'm still holding on these 137 puts. I'm waiting to see what happens at 140 because I'm looking at this call volume spike at 140. And this is pretty prominent. This is a spike, right? It's not a, a glob or a blob. It's not over a few strikes. You can't make the case that like, oh, it's occupying 140 to 143. So we can kind of cruise up this absolute gex and then see where we go from there. No, this is a hard spike with no like confluence around it. Just making observations, not saying that that's a thing. Just observ observing for myself that a call spike without any other confluent around it is something to take note of. I'm not going to say either way or whatever, but I guarantee you, I shouldn't say guarantee, but I bet if you look at the um, dark pool script, there was probably a big order, a big level at 140. So all this once, twice, three, four, five, you, uh, uh, several times we hit 140 and we got rejected. The view app was support. Keep in mind, Microsoft was earnings today. And I remember reading an analyst report. A couple analysts said they they were just unsure. They're like, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, one said it was up in the air or what was it? Undecided. Oh, we don't know. That's it. We don't know. We don't know how to look at Microsoft. When they, when analysts say that, to me, that's, that's never good. And if you look at Microsoft's action, they took this as a way to trade. And this is what I'm going to be talking about in the, um, the earnings playbook. When they're unsure of an earnings, what they're going to, if it's going to be, what the forecast is going to be, you'll see a lot of trading right after a close. I mean, I remember seeing it spike up and people got really excited and then it came down. People got really upset and then it just leveled off. And then eventually when they started talking about, probably the CFO started speaking more guidance, that's when you saw the drop. In any event, there was lots of talk about Microsoft using NVIDIA chips and how that might or might not work out in the time frame they had. So instead of playing Microsoft, I was actually playing NVIDIA on the earnings. 147, sure. I had that as a call for Friday, as a hedge for the 137. But 1137s were just puts. The 135 is my actual target. Why is that the target? Because that, that high gex and does it show itself by the end of the day here? 
I don't think it does. I thought it turned red, or maybe that because I had that on advanced gex. I noticed that the overall, the net gex environment turned negative. So what I did here was uncheck all the expirations and select just this Friday. Yes, yeah, see here, it turns net negative. And this is after hours data. Or is this, yeah, so this is different than what we were just looking at. But it flashed negative, and that 135 was still there. And I saw the put volume was above us. So we're, we were already below it. So this is now going to be resistance instead of being support. 135 is the next support there for the put volume. And the open interest is also 135. So to me, triple confluence, and then just for kicks and giggles, what does the absolute gex say? That's the next one down. See how the 147 wasn't really anything in absolute gex? It still isn't. Even though you have this high gex here, there's, there's not that double confluence there. In any event, this was the trajectory that I laid into, that I kept. I really wanted to get rid of it first thing in the morning. I didn't. That's okay. Kept it because 140 held. Now I'm holding it overnight, and this is a, a quick, this is a Friday expiration. This is like playing zero DTE on SPY, but there are all no zero DTEs on in, NVIDIA. It's just a weekly expiration. What am I talking about? You guys know that. Anyway, so what I'm saying is that because of this, these spikes in the call volume and the put volume that came up later in the day, I was able to hold on to my missed, my, I'm doing air quotes right now, my missed opportunity of the 137. So this is all interesting, <clears throat> right? But how do, how do I, you know, how do I get used to this? I, I don't exactly grasp what you're talking about, Doc. How do I get used to it? Screen time. Use, you just got to get your, your eyes on this. The more you see it, the more you see how the price action acts onto it and rejects it or crosses over it and then uses it as support just like a regular technical level you'd be able to apply this a lot quicker it takes a little time but it's just like anything you know when you first started driving a car you know okay i get it the, the gas is on the right the brake is on the left okay got it but you you get when you get into that muscle memory and you're able to trade and that's when it really starts taking over and you're like oh i can really just glance at this see where that where that that call volume spike is you know that that's going to be a good resistance. Maybe you could set an alert for 141. You know what I mean? So you can plan your day around it. And I think that was like the, I don't think, I know that that was a, a whole idea of why, when, or when Bryant created this, was that he wanted to be able to glance at something, get the levels, and move on. And remove himself from being attached to the screens. And that's not the goal for everyone. A lot of people in the community are scalpers. I mean, they trade intraday in five minutes. They're out. They're in and out in five minutes. Some are in and out in 15 minutes. Whatever the trade is, this could have been a five-minute trade, a 10-minute trade. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of rambling, and I apologize for that. But my point is is that it's, it's, it's able to adapt to your trading style. You can use the GEX, the advanced GEX, to plot a trade that's two months, three months, a year out. You can see the sentiment for NVIDIA. Let's go to April of next year. Well, this is every expiration date up until or through the end of the year into 2025. And you can plan accordingly. So we have the 150 that stands out. And then slowly what I do is I start removing the closest expirations. You see how this one's 33%? This is the most traded. Uh, this Friday is the most traded out of all the expirations. And then there's the, the month OPEX, the 15th, which I have the puts for. Very low puts. I'm not even going to say because it's I don't want to cause a stir. And then over here at the end of the year. So I'm starting to trim. Let's just use from this month OPEX to April. And we'll see. Look at that. Under, under a percent. So maybe we'll, we'll get rid of that one too.
150 still strong. And now we can start, we can actually use these levels here to plot on our charts. It will tell you where the, the, the strike with the most absolute gex is at 140. And you know, that's a, a strong attraction. You can use the, the place with the highest, uh, the highest negative gex and use that as a, as a plot on your chart. It'll take you 20 minutes to set up <clears throat> and then five minutes to readjust every time you get new information. But it's a way to use the advanced GEX and other data here for a couple months out. Obviously, a lot of people in the community, we talk about intraday trading and swing trading, but I just wanted to let you guys know that this is available for any expiration that's available on NVIDIA is available to check here. So let's go through 2025 and the more you start trimming the local and look out further down the line the different information you'll get so let's get rid of november altogether you know what let's get rid of 2024 altogether and just look at 2025 this is all the expirations in 2025 for nvidia and 150 is still the strong point 170 that was something we talked about in a couple videos prior. 170 is still a high point. And let's see what the absolute GEC says. It's kind of hard to see with that, right? Just below where we are now. Second highest is that 150. We're going to watch these throughout the months coming to see if this starts growing. As that sentiment or that high liquidity area grows, the attraction will grow up that way. I still think NVIDIA has a little bit of a uh, a correction to make before we go up that high. But I digress. So this is a way to plan through your different trading styles. But always double back. You can use that and then include what your your technical analysis says. All right, we're reaching the uh, resistance here. We poked, we made a new ultimate, I mean, all-time high, ultimate high. We're on a little, uh, little overextended here. It would make sense to come back to 130. Maybe it would make sense to come back to 116. Whatever your trade theory is, you can then go back and test it to see what other data says. Does it make sense to go to 130? Yeah, 130 makes sense. There's absolute gex here in 2025. I forgot we're on those. Right? So you just you cycle through it. You go back and forth. You overlay, and then you change. You overlay the technical analysis on top of the gex, and then you overlay... The quant, if you're trading intraweekly or intraweek, uh, intraday. <clears throat> I usually have two quant charts up. Here's the NVIDIA one for today. NVIDIA, also, you could have used the quant chart perfectly today. Right? When we opened and I was expecting a, a, a flush down, I would have seen the intraday, the max pain, and the buy zone all in that one area. I'd be like, okay. We're probably not going to get to that 135 because we have the max pain, the intraday right there. It was a possibility, but we didn't quite get there. These levels are the weekly static levels, the buy and the sell zones. Tomorrow, we'll have new intraday levels. These two levels will change. The, the two-day VWAP will be different, and the VWAP right here will be different. But these levels will stay static. And you that's how you play it. I make a, a trade... Early in the week, a plan to go down or up, and then you maintain it throughout the week. Okay, maybe we're not going down to the the buy zone where we thought. Let's cut our losses, if any, and we'll keep the hedges and let the hedges run. In this case, we did get down to that 137. I missed it, but we're going to wait one more day, you know? And this is how you, you plan your week. Even though I'm intraday trading, I'm doing it with Friday expirations. So it's, it's a little different. I know a lot of people talk about or ask about SPX. I like I have nothing against SPX. I just don't trade it. I'm starting to again because the amazing tools that are available here. And I think I'm going to make a, a separate um, video just about this suite. I call it the SPX suite. It's actually the SPX trade engine channel. But here's where you can find all the info and data you didn't know you needed when you're trading SPX. 
I'm definitely going to make something separate about this. But I mean, just for, just to give you a, a an idea. Let me share my screen because I see uh, someone coming in. Just to give you an idea of what you're looking at, it's data that that will tell you, alert you when the when the environment is right for say an iron condor. It'll let you know the profit target, the stop loss, the estimated margin we need, the average time you'll spend in this strategy. I think I saw one today that I really liked because it was a low margin. And it, was it this one? Yeah. It was an iron condor. Uh, profit target, 49 cents. Stop loss, 195. Estimated margin, 902. Risk, $98. Reward, $49. And it closed. Was this the one? Iron condor beta. Iron condor. Yeah, it closed in two minutes. <laughs> and that, that was the flush down that we had in the morning. So it's pretty interesting when you, when you look back and I just go through these and like, yeah, that one looks good. No, this one's too much margin. I, I don't really, that's not really for me. I'm not taking these trades, but I'm getting used to opening myself up to SPX again. And if you're not, you're not accustomed to SPX, you could do the same thing here. Again, this is all recorded. If you just walked in, <clears throat> I'll make it available for you, but we're going to do this separate in a separate video about the SPX. But that was really what I wanted to cover today was the NVIDIA NVIDIA resistance of 140 and what was that about? And also the SPY. And we were able to look at that on the GEX and the quant charts and make sense of it. And that's really the basis of what we're doing here at QTA. It's, it's not to change your trading style. It's to give you more data so that you could trade more confidently. More confidently, I mean, okay, we all know technical analysis, but okay, why am I stopping here? I get that, okay, this might be the, the overnight low that we're running into, but why is it one, two, three, four? Like I said, several times we're running into this, and all you needed to do was check one set of data. You could say the two-day VWAP was strong today. And on the GEX for NVIDIA, you could say it was the call volume. Let's go back to here. This call volume spike provided resistance. So you couple this call volume spike with resistance. The two-day VWAP and the psychological level or technical level of 140. And that's where you got the resistance for today. I know I usually go an hour. Uh, now that I'm recovering, I might go a little less, but I'm going to try and do like one or two a week. But in the meantime, leave Leave comments in the chat what you want to go over for next time or a topic or a question or about anything, and we'll cover it We'll cover it in the next session. And if you're on the fence about joining, there's a code in chat. It's DNOW30. Use that at checkout. It gives you 30% off your first month. This way you get to have access to all the tools. It's not a trial. It's not certain tools. You get access to the full set of tools all the gamma exposures um the spx suite spx trade engine the gold chat quant chat option spreads channel all that you have access to for one full month to make sure you absolutely love it and then we can take it from there all right guys so that's that's about what i have for today and again if you have anything you wanted to go over ask me in chat in public chat or enthusiast chat whichever one you're subscribed to and we'll cover it next time all right, guys, thanks so much, and take care. Sure.